Hello, Internet. It is a beautiful Sunday morning, and today we're going to move out of our comfort zone. Today, we have a look at something that's actually happening right now in research. And let's start if you combine something. The first one is Autograd. Autograd can differentiate native Python and NumPy code. So what it means, it can take derivatives. It calculates derivatives. And the interesting thing is it supports reverse mode differentiation. This means backpropagation very, very well. So you can take efficiently gradients of scalar valued functions with respect to array valued arguments. And this is something very important if you're working to train neural networks. To show you an example here, we have defined a function, tangens hyperbolicus, and then it is just one line of code to take the gradient function of this function in specific on a target value. So you have autograde. Here is the GitHub that is optimized to differentiate native Python and NumPy code. And now imagine you would combine this with another piece of code that has been developed within TensorFlow. And this is XLA, Optimizing Compiler for Machine Learning. And you might say, hey, what the hell is XLA? Why do I need it? Now, this is a little bit technical, but no problem. Just follow me. XLA stands for Accelerated Linear Algebra. And it is a domain-specific compiler for linear algebra that can accelerate TensorFlow models with potentially no, no source code changes. And this is important because if you switch from a pure CPU to a GPU or to a tensor processing unit accelerator, you do not want to change your code. Of course, there are speed improvements, but to get an idea what it does, let's have a look at the official documentation. And it tells you, hey, let's define some, some code. We have here a model, and what it does, it takes this, the sum of x plus y, operates on set, and does a reduce sum operation. Now, run it without XLA, without this compiler, the graph launches three kernels, one for the multiplication, one for adding x plus y, and one for the reduction. However, XLA can optimize the graph so that it computes the result in a single kernel launch. So it fuses the addition, multiplication, and reduction into a single GPU kernel. And you know, when we're talking about hardware accelerators, about speed, removing memory operation, this is the best way to improve performance. Now, if you are familiar with TensorFlow models uh, applying special uh, linear algebra compiler, you know about just-in-time compilation, if you're familiar with this, great. But what I would like to show you, what the researcher at Google Research have done, they combined Autograd, so this very fast function for differentiation to calculate backpropagation, for example, in a neural network, with a compiler function for linear algebra, where they reduced the memory operations and you can run this on a cpu on a gpu on a tpu and it is specific to python and numpy code so what the hell you can do with this and i suppose you already guessed it the answer is jax and what they done for their research in artificial intelligence for the training the testing the validation and even the explanation part coming up they developed JAX. And they found that JAX, a machine learning framework developed by Google Research, they shared the experience, outlined what we'll find, why JAX. So let's go in. JAX is a Python library. Perfectly. This means we can use it within our Jupyter notebooks, within our environments we are familiar with, designed for high performance numerical computing, especially ML research. It is based on NumPy. This is great. So we have Python and NumPy codes. And what we can do is we can accelerate it on CPU, GPU, TPU. 
and we have two options, two, two functions. We can very fast differentiate operators, tensors, or functors within this network. And it, we have a very potent compiler, so we can run it on different nodes, on different multi-GPU or TPU environments. So let's have a look at this in the official documentation from DeepMind. And they tell us, at first, differentiation. Great. Gradient-based optimization is fundamental for machine learning. Well, we know this. Vectorization. In machine learning, we often apply a single function to a lot of data, calculating the loss across a batch. And they provide an automatic vectorization via the VMAP transformation that simplifies this form of programming. So more or less what they want, hey, do not mind if you have a CPU, GPU, or TPU accelerator in the cloud, you can use the same code on whatever machine or multi-node machine you're working. So, also supports large-scale data parallelism via the related P-map transformation. I suppose P for parallel mapping transformation, elegantly distributing data that is too large for the memory of a single accelerator. And you say, hey, yeah, I know this. No, wasn't this the same with Databricks, with PySpark? The same happened there if we have a Spark cluster. And yes, yes, of course, you're right. We had there the data loader and the delta lake and whatever. And we had our special file formats, our parquet file formats. And then we used Lakehouse. But this is here a Google-specific um environment, a Google-specific ecosystem. And of course, they build on their two strength. And this one, to differentiate a function, and second, to run it on cloud TPU accelerators without changing the code too much. So we have our Python code, we have our NumPy code. We can differentiate beautifully backpropagation, whatever is combined with this. If we have to calculate the loss across a batch, Across a lot of data, we have some vectorization and we have just-in-time compilation using XLA. It's used to just-in-time compile and execute the JAX program on a GPU, on a cloud TPU accelerators. So there we have it. And now the question is, what can we do with it? Now they tell you what they do on the different ecosystem, but they say that this is something why we do JAX because you will not believe it, but graph neural networks, DeepMind, Google tells us, are an exciting area of research. Yes, and this is GGraph. GGraph provides a standardized data structure for graphs. So on top of JAX, you have this Google Giraffe, where you have a set of utilities for working with graphs and a zoo, of forkable and graph neural network models. So it is, let's say, similar, as I already showed you, PyTorch Geometric or Deep Graph Library. Now we have here a Google specific, a DeepMind specific software package, a library, a Python library, where you can uh, have all the advantages from a very fast differentiation a vectorization, a parallelization because of this XLA compiler that we first met with TensorFlow, TensorFlow uh, kernels. So this is it, why we encounter JAX. And this is why we are doing JAX, because our aim is to have a look at Giraffe at a graph neural network with a lot of forkable and extensible graph neural network models. And this is what we want to have. We want to have a variety of models we can try out, we can experiment, we can deploy for our specific task for our application. And so now this is out of our comfort zone and we developed something beautifully. And of course, whenever we start with JAX, we have our GitHub repository and here we are, JAX, Autograd and XLA. So here we go. What is JAX? JAX is Autograd and XLA, 
brought together for high performance machine learning research. So it tells us this is the way to go if you are a hardcore Google coder and you want to operate on their uh, TPU, TPU clusters, TPU cloud engine, this is the way to go. They provide a very nice introduction. They have their collab uh, notebook, Jupyter Notebooks in the cloud. You have the basics, you have a training of a simple network with a TensorFlow data set, and then you also have a training of a simple network with a PyTorch data set loading. In both cases, they do not reinvent the data loader, but they use either the TensorFlow data loader or the PyTorch data loader. But let's not jump ahead. This is Jax, of course. We have here the release 0.1.74. Just 12 days ago, there was the release. We have 325 contributors to Jax. And I can recommend that you have a look at this. You have a quick start, you have the install guide, you have the libraries. Yeah, let's have a look at the libraries. I found here this AI Summer. No idea who publishes it or uh, not. This is by Sergius in March 2021. And it is a very nice introduction that I found helpful. And Parallel to this, we should have Jax Quick Start. No, Google, yes, we have been there. Yeah, you know, this is not what we need anymore. This is not what we need anymore. The basics. The basics is if you are familiar with NumPy, some people tell you, hey, Jax is NumPy on steroids. Well, it's not that easy. But it is true that instead of the normal NumPy standard array, and we are here in an array defined uh, functional space, we have an underlying structure now with JAX that's called a device array. And device arrays are lazy. You know this from the TensorFlow 1, which means that they keep the values in the accelerator, GPU, TPU, and pull them only when needed. Now, this is something that is great for calculation. And we can use device array just like we use standard arrays in NumPy. And if you have a look at the acceleration, there's a very nice example. So you take a, a NP and NumPy random number, and you calculate the dot product between these two matrices. And then you say, okay, and now with JAX NumPy, I convert it to a device array and then I do exactly the same. And of course I add the command block until ready because we know about the asynchronous uh, calculation. And as you find out, the normal NumPy gives you 52 milliseconds per loop. And with this acceleration TPU and TPU acceleration with JAX, you go from 52 milliseconds to 1.4 milliseconds. Now, in real life, if you do this, you will find that at first you only have a two times or three times faster performance. But this is not our case. What they tell you, we have differentiation. Yes, I already told you about this, the grad function I showed you. JAX is able to differentiate to all sorts of Python NumPy functions loops, you can have a derivative of a derivative of a derivative, so no problem how many times you apply this. And they show you from Jax import the gradient, define a function, and then you say, hey, take the derivative of this function on a specific target value, and you will get your result. Yeah, then he mentions the XLA compiler. We already talked about this. This is a domain-specific compiler for linear algebra optimization, extensively trained and learned to operate it in TensorFlow, in a TensorFlow ecosystem, just-in-time compilation. This is very nice because just-in-time compilation is a way of computing, executing computer code that involves computation during the execution of the program at runtime rather than before execution. And you use the just in time command, the JIT command. And there is another example in it that tells you you can use here our function 
g, this is defined in just-in-time compilation of the function f. So what else we have? Yeah, we have pmap. pmap is another transformation. This enables to replicate the computation into multiple core or devices. We all were told about this and execute them in parallel. This is the famous pmap, parallel mapping operation. And you can do this. This is okay. What else? Automatic vectorization we talked about. A transformation that enables us to vectorize functions. Yes. If you want to see an example of this, we have a function f of x, and we return the numpy of the square of this function. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So the number generator. Okay, profiling. No, this is a little bit too complicated. A call up notebook. Yeah, this is the call up notebook. So what I, yes, I know, I know, I know, I'm not signed in. So all the examples I showed you, there's a beautiful JAX Jupyter notebook where you have the basics. You can experiment this. You have the automatic differentiation on a function. You have the compiler function. You have the just in time compilation. You have the parallel mapping. You have the vector size mapping, number generator, and some profiler. This is nice. Again, NumPy on a CPU, GPU, and TPU with great automatic differentiation. You know this comes from Autograd for high-performance machine learning research, and you know we have this special XLA compiler doing all this vectorization and parallelization for our GPU and TPU accelerator. What's very nice, I think here, in the official Read the Docs documentation, Jax the Sharp Bits, it sounds funny, but it is very informative if you want to have a little bit deeper insight into Jax and what are pure functions and why sometimes Jax does not really provide some advantages, some benefits. Have a look at this. It is really interesting. There are a lot of good examples to understand. And... If you think it is easy and straightforward, no, you have to be careful doing all this coding and they explain to you why and what it is. And yeah, <laughs> and you can even go a level deeper to really understand what's going on with the execution of the code. But this is way outside of the scope of this video. I just wanted to show you, this is the basis. This is JAX. This is the, if you want, operating level that we need to have before we enter now in the next video. Our main goal, and this is Shiraf, this is a graph neural network library operating on JAX. So we have already PyTorch Geometric, I showed you in the video, operates of course on PyTorch. Then we have the Deep Graph library, which is kind of agnostic. You can operate it either on TensorFlow or on PyTorch, and now this here is library number three. It is Shuraf, developed by Google. It is based on JAX for speed optimization, differentiation, parallelization. If you are familiar with TensorFlow, of course, you have advantages, and the next video will focus on Shuraf. Thank you, and I see you at the next video.